Mm. Oh my God, it's so good. This is incredible. Hey everybody, today we're making birria tacos, but instead of cooking it low and slow all day, we're gonna be fast and furious in the pressure cooker. And you are gonna be eating delicious, decadent birria tacos that will totally change your life. And you're gonna be wanting to make these bad boys every single night. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get into it, I need to put my hair up because this is gonna be a whole situation if I don't. Bow in the center, we're good? Now we're ready. First things first, we're gonna season our beef. We want the salt to penetrate the meat. And because we we're working with Chuck, it's like a thick daddy, okay? Not a thick daddy, that sounds ridiculous. Because we're working with Chuck, you got a lot of meat there. So it's gonna take a minute for the salt to go ahead and penetrate through. What we're working with here is kosher salt. I like this because it's got a big, thick flake on it and that allows it to dissolve easier, but also gives you more control when you're seasoning your beef. So we want it to look like a light snowfall on each piece of beef. And a little bit of pepper. You'll notice that this beef has a decent amount of fat on it. The reason that I didn't trim all the fat off is because I want that to impart some extra flavor into our juice. So we're still maximizing our flavor and minimizing the amount of work we're doing. Now we're dealing with our little bouquet of peppers. Four different types of peppers here. We have arbol, chipotle, pasilla, and guajillo. All four of these peppers can be found at your local Mexican market. We have Vallarta up the street from us, so that's where we got these. But if you maybe don't have access to that, you can definitely order them online. There's tons of different dried chili options that are available in places like Amazon. I'll link a couple options below in case that's easy for you. We are going to de-seed our peppers. All you are going to need is a scissor. We're gonna cut the top off and then make it rain. It's okay if your pepper breaks apart like this, because ultimately all we need is this beautiful skin on the outside to get us that flavor. Be very careful not to touch your eyes after doing this. Same concept with our bigger peppers. Chop the top off. Because they're a little bit flatter than those anchos, I just like to break them open because it's much easier to scoop them out. Boom. The nice thing is, is that every pepper is going in the blender, regardless of what horrid shape you tear it into it's all gonna end up into the beautiful puree. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be delicious. We have all of these beautiful pepper skins that have been de-seeded and ready to go. We're going to toast them before we put them in the blender. So I'm gonna pop them right into the pressure cooker. We added all of our peppers into our pressure cooker on saute mode just to extract all of those amazing oils from our pepper skins. And you wanna just watch it like a hawk and stir frequently. Make sure you're using a wooden spoon when you're stirring because you don't wanna scratch the bottom of your pressure cooker. So you can already smell all of the flavors waking up in the peppers, it's becoming super fragrant. And we're gonna do this for probably about three to five minutes. You just wanna make sure that you are pulling it before it starts smoking because you don't wanna burn your peppers. Now that we've awakened our peppers, we are going to put them in a blender and cover them with hot broth. That way they can soften and they'll become a little bit more pliable when we go to blend them. It's about two cups. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the blender so that I'm softening our peppers. Because my peppers are not fully submerged here, I don't want that. So I'm gonna actually take it out and put it into a bowl that can be easily covered. Don't worry, we're still gonna use the blender so it's not in the extra dishes. You want our peppers mostly submerged in the liquid and then we're gonna just cover it with a little bit of plastic wrap so that way it's steaming and continuing to soften the top part so it's okay if there's a little bit sticking up but we want it mostly submerged we're gonna set this off to the side and then I'm going to grab our beef and sear it in our pressure cooker I've got a neutral oil I'm using avocado but feel free to use any high smoke point oil so you want something like an avocado oil a canola oil a safflower oil I wouldn't use peanut oil because it's got a little bit of a flavor. So just kind of use something that's neutral in flavor and has a high smoke point. We're gonna go and just add a couple of tablespoons. Before adding my meat, I'm gonna just pat it down to get any residual moisture off of our pieces. And that's gonna help us get a more uniform browning. When you're cooking your meat, it's very important not to overcrowd your pan and work in batches. If you overcrowd it, what's gonna happen is your meat is going to steam and instead of being that beautiful golden crust, you're gonna be left with kind of gray, flabby pieces of meat. It'll taste okay, but you're not gonna get that depth of flavor that you get from the char. Another reason that we like to sear our meat in the pressure cooker is because we're also building what we call a fawn, which is that great crispy flavor that's left on the bottom of the pan after you sear meat. When we add our vegetables later, they're gonna absorb all of that delicious flavor that we worked so hard to build at the bottom of our pan. At this point, our meat's not cooked all the way through. The center is still very much raw. When we cook it for an hour in the pressure cooker, it'll cook the rest of the way through so it's falling apart. We finished our last batch of meat, so I'm gonna remove these and then set them off to the side. 
Look at all of the beautiful oils and crispy bits that we have in the bottom of here. That is gonna be perfect for cooking our onions. Now I'm gonna add my onions and just a little pinch of salt. So we're gonna saute those down and get them nice and glossy. You don't have to add a lot. We're going for a four finger pinch. Sprinkle that and give it a little toss. And what that's gonna do is it's going to extract all of the moisture from the onions and help to deglaze the bottom of the pan that has all of that crispy goodness from our meat. I'm gonna put our meat off to the side while our onions cook. While our onions are sauteing, I'm gonna get started on our pepper puree. You can see that these are now so soft and pliable, which is gonna make them much easier to blend. Add the juices and the peppers together to the blender. Not forgetting about our onions, we're gonna give them a quick mix. To our blender, we have our peppers, our beef stock, and now we're going in with our spices. This is a combination of cumin, coriander, and oregano. Exact measurements will be below in the description. Now we're going in with two cans of Rotel. This is a combination of diced tomatoes and green chilies. A little pinch of salt. Always add, you can never take away. Seal the deal and blend it out. Just going in for a quick taste to make sure everything's balanced. So good. I think the only thing that I need is just a little bit more salt. The nice thing about the salt is it acts as an abrasive unit, so it'll help break things up a little bit more. Mm. Perfect. This is now sauteed down and nice and sweaty. So I'm gonna add a splash of vinegar just to kind of brighten it up. We're going for probably like one to two tablespoons. And you can already smell how amazing that is. I love using apple cider vinegar because it adds just like a little bit of sweetness and an extra depth of flavor that you wouldn't get from just a standard white vinegar. We're gonna cook that for about a minute and then add our garlic. Now I'm going in with our garlic. Now we're gonna add our meat back in. Nestle it into our sauteed onions. Do not throw out all of that amazing juice. You see all this in the corner? That is flavor. We want it in our final product. We're gonna pour that right in. Next up, our beautiful pepper puree. This tastes insane. We're gonna add the rest of this beef stock to top it off. All right, do not like to waste. We're gonna add our beef stock to our blender. Swirl it around, that way we're getting all of that delicious flavor on the sides. Last step, add two bay leaves and some peppercorns just for a little bit of extra flavor. Now we're just gonna mix everything to make sure that everything's incorporated and evenly distributed. Look how gorgeous this looks. Oh my gosh, already amazing. And once everything is fully submerged, this is where the magic happens. We're gonna seal the deal and cook this on one hour on high, walk away, live our life, come back to mind-blowingly delicious birria. It has been an hour and 10 minutes. Our pressure cooker went for an hour and then we let it depressurize on its own for 10 minutes, just so it can kind of finish up that last couple minutes of cooking. We're gonna release the pressure now. I'm gonna use a spoon so I don't burn myself because the steam that's gonna come out is steam and it's hot. Oh my God, it already smells so good. <laughs> it's also very important that when you do the quick release that you let it fully depressurize before you take the lid off. If you try to take it, the lid off too early, one, going to have the lid shoot off like a rocket, and two, you're gonna get hit with a bunch of steam and I want you to be safe. I know it smells amazing. I don't want you to injure yourself, okay? Oh yeah, it is, I can feel how tender this is. It's gonna shred in a second. We're gonna pull our meat out into a bowl so we can shred it. So we're gonna use a slotted spoon. Just take all of these big, delicious meat chunks and put them in this bowl. Sometimes you'll see people who have this meat that's absolutely already falling apart. And oftentimes it's overcooked. When you have all the connective tissue completely disintegrate and it doesn't hold together like this does, usually the meat's gonna be a little bit dried out. So the fact that it's still holding together, but you can kind of see that it's loose and wiggly, that means that we hit it right on the money and we're still gonna have a ton of moisture, but it'll be really easy for us to shred it. And before we shred everything, I'm gonna give one little taste test. Look how hot, steamy, and delicious that is. Go to tea. Mm, look on. Oh my God, that is amazing. And literally melts in your mouth. It is so good. Now look at how easy that is to pull apart. This is like no joke, so simple to shred. And look at how moist that is. A lot of times when you get that pull apart texture, it's overcooked or it's a little dry, but look at how juicy that is. 
This would take you hours on the stove and it just took one hour in our pressure cooker. So I'm just gonna run my fork through here. It's gonna be really rustic. Once it's shredded to about this consistency, we're gonna put it off to the side. And now we're gonna focus on straining out our broth. Get my consomme, pour it right into my fat separator. And you can see that it's catching a lot of the solids up top. Perfect, we don't want that. We just want that super beautiful broth. If your top strainer starts getting a little bit backed up because you've got a lot of solids here, just have a discard bowl where you can just toss that in. I'm gonna blitz this up into a salsa later too, so we're not wasting anything. And stop. Time to make the tacos. This is where you get to have a little bit of fun. We're gonna take our tortilla. We're gonna dip it both sides in the beautiful consomme, which has that little ribbon of fat at the top. And then we're gonna put it right on the pan. I've got a nice big pan. We'll do three at a time. I'm gonna add a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese to each half of the taco. Now take a spoonful of meat and put it right on top of that cheese. Now top it off with a spoonful of consomme just to give that little extra boost of flavor and moisture to our taco. A little pinch of cilantro and onion. Now using a spatula, we're gonna close this and press it down. And then just squish it down. When it comes time to flip your taco, go from the open side out and then twist it. Look at that beautiful browning right there. Once we get these babies off the stove, now it's time to make our consomme so we have something to dip it in. In a small cute cup, take one ladle of your consomme and then top it with a good amount of cilantro and onion. Mmm, oh my God, it's so good. This is incredible. This is 100% gonna be your new favorite recipe. This is so ridiculously delicious. If you wanna see more recipes like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and drop a comment with what you want me to make next. Also, check me out on TikTok and Instagram so we can keep cooking together. All right, cheers. Mm.